Hi, I'm Danielle. And I'm Tara. And we're going to be discussing interprofessional collaboration promotes Parkinson's medication safety. Um, so we would like to thank our faculty mentor, Diane Ellis, um, the Fitzpatrick College of Nursing, and the Fabi Memorial Library. So just a little bit of background, Parkinson's disease is a chronic and degenerative neurological disorder associated with decreased dopamine levels. And alterations in the medication timing or omission lead to poor outcomes, including respiratory arrest, cardiac arrest, and death. And previous re research has shown simulation training leads to an increase in students' knowledge of medication safety. So we did a literature review for our research study, and these are just some facts we came across. So among patients with Parkinson's disease admitted, 3.9% um, die in acute care settings. And because the medication regimens for Parkinson's disease are so individualized, it creates an increased risk for medication errors. Um, also, previous research show, has shown that simulation training leads to an increase in student knowledge of PD medication safety, and a mock code is an efficient simulation and hands-on learning experience that allows individuals to become more comfortable and practice working and communicating as an interprofessional team. So the purpose of this study was to investigate the impact of an interprofessional mock code on students' comfortability and competency while working together in an interprofessional team during the mock code, and also to increase the knowledge and awareness among the four disciplines used, which we'll discuss more as it relates to Parkinson's disease, medication safety, and timing during transitions in care. So the interprofessional team that was included on this study were undergraduate nursing students from the Villanova College of Nursing, doctor of nurse anesthesia students also from Villanova, and then the doctor of osteopathic medicines from PCOM in Philadelphia and doctor of psychology students from PCOM. And during this mock code, the students from these four disciplines worked together um, on a mock code simulation resulting from PD medication error during a transition in care from home to acute setting. So for methods and design, the study was conducted in five steps. So first, the participants read and signed an informed consent and answered a pre-test questionnaire. Um, then the students participated in the simulation and um, then they participated in emotional and psychological debriefing sessions and a debriefing for meaningful learning following the simulation. And then after that, the participants completed the post-test. During this study, a study team member administered the pre and post-test participants, so one of us, and then the learning by doing and then reflecting on the experience is um, constructs the knowledge that they can use in their future professions, and the reflection offers the opportunity to enhance clinical reasoning. For the results, um, the following questions were given on the pre and post test and were considered. When is it acceptable to hold um, medications for a patient with PD? And the answer is never. Which of the following medications is only administered orally? Cinemet. At the present time, how comfortable are you working with an interprofessional team? And at the present time, rate your competency to participate as a member of an interprofessional team. So um, undergraduate BSN students, Dr. of Osteopathic Medicine students, and Dr. of Clinical Psychology students all increase their knowledge um, in regards to understand the inappropriateness of withholding medication from a patient with PD. And then there was no change in understanding of the inappropriateness of withholding medication from a patient with PD for the Masters of Nurse Anesthesia students. And this is mainly due to the high correct rate on both the pre and post tests of the nurse anesthesia students. So these are the results for comfortability. So as you can see, for all groups, comfortability increased after completing the simulation. And then these are the results for competency. So also all groups combined, the competency also increased after doing the simulation. Conclusion, so the communication is the most important tool for interprofessional team members. Um, and interprofessional education is an innovative school that offers unique experience for all students prior to entering the workforce. So Tara and I ourselves actually um, completed the simulation and I would definitely say that um, it is a unique experience and we took a lot away from it. Um, 
When interprofessional students engage in simulation, it emphasizes collaboration, enhances their understanding of different professional roles, improves their ability to communicate with healthcare professionals and develops their ability to work as a team. Thank you so much for listening to this presentation. Now, if you have any questions, please feel free to enter in the chat or ask us aloud. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for your presentation. I have a question, um, which is, it sounds like the, the process that you implemented was very effective. So what do you see as the benefits but challenges of trying to implement uh, an interdisciplinary practice you know, for other situations? Yeah, I think the biggest benefit would be patient safety overall, like as in the simulation, um, them being able to work together really affected whether the patient lived or survived. So I think the biggest benefit with interprofessional um, practice is patient safety. And I think the biggest um, risk or um, the hardest thing about it is it's, it's so, it's difficult to be able to communicate with that many people for one person. And I think getting everyone on the same page in any situation is going to be difficult. So I think that's probably the hardest. So what were the, in, in devising your study, what were the challenges you encountered in really carrying it out? I think that one of the challenges is definitely, um, you know, before participating in the simulation, I would say um, definitely the nursing students, and this is probably true for the other students of the other disciplines that we don't get a lot of experience um, firsthand working with other disciplines. So, you know, people are really nervous coming into it. They don't really know what to expect. We're using students from Philadelphia College of Medicine and Villanova. So there can kind of be a barrier that you need to break, but they're thrown into this emergency situation. And after working through it together and having the big debrief, I think that everyone always learns a lot from it and feels a lot more comfortable with each other after because it is something really serious that you have to go through. And then I'm just curious, what are your postgraduate plans? So Tara and I both, Tara has a job in, um, in ICU and I don't have a job yet, but I also plan on working in critical care. Congratulations. And I'm sure you'll be very successful. You know. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I, I want to just say what a, what a great job you've done and thank you both so much for your research. But I'd also like to take this moment to congratulate all of our faculty scholars. So if you know, feel free to unmute yourselves now, but I just want to say all of you did a tremendous job and, you know, my uh, great kudos to your outstanding research efforts. It's, I am stunned every year about the quality of the student uh, research going on at Villanova and all of your presentations were so professional and interesting. So congratulations, you're getting lots of congratulations in the chat. <laughs>